It seems like everyone is talking about the surface level ways to cure cracked heels, but I've yet to hear anyone teaching the internal root causes of this painful struggle. Trust me, I was surprised when I started researching and learning more about what I'm about to teach you today. In fact, I myself did not know this one very important cause of cracked heels. Stay tuned to find out what it is. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Kim. I've been a, one of the only holistic podiatrists in this country for well over 30 years now. In my practice, I focus on what's going on inside our bodies and how it affects our feet. Today I'm sharing some surprising gut health related issues that could be causing your cracked heels. Let's get right into it. This is the number one cause that I did not even know about until I started researching about this cracked heels. The problem is that there is no oil being produced on the bottom of the foot, which I didn't know, because there's no lubrication here. Because there's something called sebaceous gland, which produces oil through our skin all over the body, except three places. They're at the palm, and then your sole, and the top of the foot. This happens to be where there's no hair at all, and the sebaceous gland produces oil through the hair follicle, and only because you don't have the hair there, then you don't have any oil being produced. Now this is a devastating problem because all the things that I know about feet and you're putting a lot of weight into it and you, you're walking a lot and with all the pressure going into the area, if you have no lubrication, it's going to be uh, having a lot of uh, elasticity problem that can cause cracking and bleeding, all kinds of other problems. Next one is no sweat. Well, we should be having a lot of sweat coming out of our body, especially our feet. And both of our feet have 250,000 sweat glands on the bottom of both feet. And it's producing about one pint of water or sweat every day, which is about a whole bottle of water uh, for both feet on a daily basis. Unfortunately, however, we're not producing enough sweat to lubricate. Remember, we don't have an oil gland to lubricate, so we need some, some uh, fluid to come out and to lubricate the area, but we're not even sweating. Why? Because it's supposed to um, work on your temperature. It's a cooling system. When your body gets too hot, you produce sweat to go out and then it, it uh, lowers your body temperature to 98.6, which is a perfect temperature that we want to be. So it's a cooling mechanism to let the uh, sweat out. And also it's a, when you're nervous or your fight and flight uh, uh, response, you, you can also get a lot of sweat come out. But we're not doing a whole lot of movement. A lot of us are not exercising enough. Or a lot of us are not walking enough to produce a lot of sweat. So it's called eccrine glands are the ones that are producing sweat throughout the whole body. And then epocrine glands are the ones that are on producing pheromones. You've heard of pheromones are on the axilla area on your uh, armpit or your groin area or, or, or chest area. These are the pheromones that are produced to uh, attract your mate. However, the ones that we're talking about is uh, eccrine glands that produces your sweat for these purposes. However, we're not really producing a lot of sweat because we're not moving enough, we're not exercising enough at this time. The third cause is a huge problem, which is a deficiency of nutrients. We're talking about the sweat. Now sweat is mostly water, uh, so you need to drink a lot of water, but most of us don't drink enough water. And then we have a lot of minerals that are in there. The major minerals are calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium, and sodium. Um, but uh, we're not taking enough of those minerals either. And then we have a lot of trace minerals like zinc, uh, uh, cobalt, and chromium. Uh, we have lead. A lot of these little trace minerals need to come out also with it. And also your protein needs to be synthesized and break down and have a, a byproduct of that is called um, uh, urea or other uh, byproduct that needs to come out. Ammonia is another one. But we're not producing enough of those either because we're not really effectively detoxifying our body. Also it has sweat supposed to have a lot of immune uh, cells, uh, he uh, hemoglobin uh, cells and also a lot of immune cells supposed to come out as well, but you're not producing a lot of sweat because of the deficiency of the nutrients that we're gonna be talking about. And the ones that we have problem obviously is the dehydration. We're not drinking enough water, as you know, and that's why we're not producing enough sweat either. And then low salt diet, I know a lot of people uh, it's controversial about low salt diet. A lot of people are on low, uh, low salt diet because low salt diet is supposed to be really good for you because if you take too much salt, then it can increase your uh, blood pressure, which is true. However, what they're not telling you, most important thing is your potassium. 
your potassium, you have to have enough potassium in, inside the cells. It needs to come out of the cell. As it comes out, your sodium from the outside of the cell that needs to carry the water into the cell. So in other words, you can drink all the water you want, but if you don't have good potassium and sodium exchanging the ion in the cells, then the water will not flow in and out of the cell, which is a big problem right now. A lot of people think they're, well, I'm really well hydrated. However, how come I'm always thirsty? Why? Because you don't have enough salt. You don't have enough sodium. You don't have enough potassium. When you don't, then you cannot exchange the ion, which makes the water go in and out of the cell. This is a big problem that most of us have. And then obviously lack of uh, a lot of nutrients like vitamin C, uh, vitamin B, E, and F. And also uh, some of the minerals. We talked about potassium and zinc, also very, very important mineral that we need to have in our sweats. But we're not taking in enough uh, fruits and vegetables. We're not eating well. We're, not, we're eating too much processed food. So we're not having enough, a, a lot of these minerals and vitamins. And then it needs to be in the sweat, but we're not producing enough sweat. On top of that, your skin is cracking because it doesn't have enough elasticity from having a lot of collagen supplementation and also vitamin C. Vitamin C is crucial for our skin regeneration and when we don't have enough of those, then you can, your skin can uh, crack and it can cause all kinds of issues as well. Fourth cause is medical conditions. The top four, the hypothyroidism, which is a, a lowering of your metabolism. It slows down your metabolism, so you tend to gain weight. On top of that, you know the obesity, a lot of diabetes. And when you're pregnant, then you gain weight. So all these four conditions will make you gain weight. When that happens, you're putting a lot more pressure onto the heel that allowed a thick callus to form. And then without elasticity and, and drying effect, it can crack and cause the cracked heels. And then the aging is another, I put it under medical condition, sorry. As I'm getting older, I feel that this is a medical condition. As we're aging, not gracefully, and then what happened is that there's not enough fat pad at the bottom of the, uh, your heel. Because lack of circulation as we get older and lack of movement, we're not getting enough blood down there to regenerate the skin. And then because of that, we're not regenerating fat pad. We're supposed to have a lot of fat underneath the uh, heel to give cushion because that's a lot of pressure going to the area. However, you're not getting enough fat pad there because of lack of circulation. And then that, uh, that increased uh, a lot of callus tissue formation and very th thinning of the skin as well, not being able to support the area uh, because of lack of elasticity. When that happens, unfortunately, you're getting fat where you don't want them and then you're losing fat like in your face and the bottom of the feet. You're losing fat there because of lack of circulation due to aging. Next cause, number five, is poor shower habits. A lot of us are in the shower for a long time, more than 10 minutes. When you do that, especially in the very hot shower, that dries your skin and that makes the heel to crack as well. So it's important to take shower, not too hot. It's not good for you, right? It opens up your pores too much and it, it, it's not good for your health to, and then keep everything too dry. So you don't want it too hot of a shower, but it's the length is the problem as well. And then harsh soap. A lot of people use a lot of scented ones. They have all kinds of different coloring to it. There are a lot of preservatives in it. So you just want a regular soap. Just soap. You don't need a scent because when you ha have all those artificial things in there, it's really not healthy for your skin. So use just normal, you know, no scent, no artificial uh, stuff into your soap. It's very important. And then you need to moisturize as you come out of the shower. You need to put lotion and you need to moisturize immediately, which is very important. And then if you need to file the calluses, you need to do it immediately after coming out of the shower at the same time. So this is a shower habits that you need to change to improve your crack. And next one, uh, next cause is poor activity habits. A lot of walking and standing is good for you. It's good for your weight loss. It's good for your metabolism. However, if you're wearing bad shoes, especially sandals without a heel cup, when you wear shoes, your heel needs to be cupped in this inside the shoes to keep all of this in place. But if you just wear sandal, it's going to flatten out and then your heel is going to get wider. When that happens, it tends to crack the heels at the same time. So uh, less wearing of sandals, which I love sandals because I'm from Guam and in a tropical weather, we love sandals. However, if you wear sandals too much, too often, then they can cause all kinds of problems because of lack of support and no heel cups like in your regular shoes. And then obviously weight gain, we talked about when you, when you gain weight, it's gonna put a lot of more pressure into this area. And the last most important is your hygiene habits. Now what happened is that a lot of people get fungal infection on your feet 
and because of too much moisture and when that happens uh, it, it, if you don't change your shoes all the time if you're wearing the same shoe all the time fungus lives inside the shoes that's their home they love inside and and in the dark uh, sweaty area they love that when the fungus gets into this area then they can eat away and make the area very dry because they love moisture and then you need to rotate your shoes you need to change your socks all the time if you're especially if you happen to be sweating quite a bit also you need to spray your shoes at the same time our feet can tell us a lot about what's happening inside our bodies we just have to listen now that you have a better understanding of how your internal health affects your cracked heels it's time to tackle cracked heels from the outside in this next video i'm sharing with you the proper sequence to cure cracked heels for good until then get educated be empowered and encourage others today.